how do you challenge and change that negative self story, that script that's there? I call it the defective story. This is a question from Ronika. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So how do you challenge and change this defective story? The not good enough, the there's something wrong with me, that narrative that's there. Well, the first thing I would su suggest, and Ronika, you're asking the question here, so I'm assuming that you're aware that maybe you're carrying a story like that. The first thing I would suggest to people is to, to, is to, to find out if you are carrying a story. And really what I mean by that, if I'm honest, is to become aware that you are carrying that story because I don't really know anyone who isn't carrying that story, at least this, to a certain degree, this, this story that there is something wrong with me. So the first thing is, can I bring awareness to this? Can I find within myself a story of something's wrong with me? One of the best things I've, I, I've, I've found for that is to find it. It's almost like to flush it up, if you like. Um, Scott Killaby, he has this process. He calls it reverse inquiry. It's really clever. What you do is kind of, you're using uh, self positive affirmations in a really clever way. You know, positive affirmations uh, typically have been about almost trying to reprogram your core beliefs or recondition your mind. Or if you know, if you say something through repetition enough, it starts to really go in. But he uses it differently. He'll, he'll find like, a, let's say something like, a, let's say something like, you construct a, a sort of a really nice statement about yourself and you start to say it to yourself. So uh, it, it could be something like, um, imagine a person has an issue around their, their appearance or something. And they start to say, I am very handsome. And they'll say that to themselves. And that, that idea is dropping down into their body and they'll actually find some sort of a rejection against it, right? So they're, now they're actually flushing up this defective story, they're kind of bringing it out from the shadows, if you like. Um, so the first step here, Ronica, is finding out, let's, let's see if it's there, let's try and get to it, expose it, bring some light to it, first of all, because you can't do anything about the defective story. There's a lot of guilt and shame around this story, and for that reason, it's usually very unconscious. So most people aren't aware that they're walking around with a lot of this guilt, but they are. So bringing it up, is, is, is the first step. Once That's the hardest step. Once that's done, it's actually not that difficult um, to, assuming you can get in touch with the emotions that are around it that will usually be there, what you can start to do is just to do inquiry on it or to ask questions of it. What function do you have? Why are you here? Um, is this true? Those types of questions. It's not so much about um, talking to yourself in a positive way it's more about just questioning and then ultimately dropping that defective story. You don't have to come up with a new story. Your, your, your natural state of being is to be in love with yourself. I know that's a crazy, crazy sounding idea for most of us because I think a lot of us feel very cut off from that, that uh, authentic, natural, inherent love that we have for ourselves. But the greatest love story in your life is the one that you have with yourself or at least the one that you had with yourself. And um, that can be rediscovered, but you don't have to write a new story. You just have to remove the, the garbage story that got placed on top of that and is, is, uh, is, is blinding us from that. It's not something that changes overnight all the time, you know, like with, with changing this narrative, it can take some time, especially with core beliefs that need to be inquired into again and again. One great way to do that also is, like I mentioned before, but also you can start to look at where you're getting triggered in your, in your life um, using your triggers. Because ultimately all of these triggers, they're showing you really what is, how is it that you see yourself. So don't waste your opportunities. Rather than ca uh, triggers, I actually start, I'm, I'm starting to use the word catalyst more and more now because trigger almost like is a negative word at this point, which shouldn't be, but it is. But a catalyst can be seen as kind of an opportunity. All oh, right, something's happening in my body right now. Let me, uh, let me really see what's going on here. Try and understand it a bit more. So Ronica, I hope that's useful. Um, and uh, if you've got a question, 
uh, you can either leave it below maybe and uh, I'll try and get to it or just send me an email at the website. And uh, thanks for being with me as always. And I'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.